I'm Bill Green. I'm a, a professor in the Department of Neurobiology at University of Chicago. I, not, I don't quite remember how many years I've been coming. So this is, the, I think, the 15th year in succession that I've been coming as a principal investigator. So I, I do research here. I haven't been teaching. There were a lot of things that, that brought me here. So actually, before that, I had, I had come, I had worked here a little bit as a graduate student. Uh, I, I had visited people. Uh, I had spent two weeks as a graduate student. And then uh, a few days, again, coming to visit, mostly coming to visit friends. I had done a research project just for a week or two. Uh, I, neurobiology and uh, and and then when I was a postdoc at Yale we would have retreats here and I would come it would be in winter and, and so I was previously exposed but uh, I I organized a conference on, on the trafficking of, of ion channels and transporters and the people who really encouraged me to apply for a, a Grant and uh, I did, and was actually they it just coincidentally the the Grass Foundation was offering for the first time uh, faculty fellowships since they they have this long standing uh, fellowship program which is for much more junior investigators, uh, mostly uh, late graduate students, postdocs, and and to to get them started. And this was to, to, to bring faculty here who, who would have a hard time normally to, to provide the funds for research. And, and I, so I, I started, so this grant provided a significant amount of funds for three years to work with another investigator. That investigator was John Marshall, who was a friend of mine from, he's at Brown, he's still at Brown University. And uh, so, there's this long-standing uh, community here of neuroscientists and cell biologists, and I immediately was drawn to coming here because it, it just is a wonderful place not only to do research, but to, uh, to, 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 to work and, and, and just talk science with, with people I normally don't. So it was a great change from the University of Chicago and, and meeting new people and, and being part of this community and of neuroscientists and cell biologists. It, it's also a wonderful place for my family. So uh, we, have, we have triplets and they were, I, I don't know, they were around 10 years old when we first started coming. And so they grew up here and it was just a wonderful place to mix uh, so not only do you have this community of scientists, you have a community of very nice people. And so there was both the social atmosphere of other families. We, stay, we still continue to stay at the cottages, though hopefully we'll have a place someday. And, uh, and it, it just was this great mix of family, community, science, uh, all these things. The truth is, I, I, I'm not, I, I, when I was in college, I, w I was a really poor college student in that I, I just could not focus on one thing. And so I was interested in physics and physical chemistry and some aspects of biology, but I was just as interested in history and political science. And so, uh, yeah, I it I think for practical reasons. So I was taking a course in membrane biophysics at the university. I was at the University of Toronto as an undergraduate, and uh, the the professor uh, and the course uh, was actually his postdoc. He and his postdoc were, were were kind of running the course, and it was this guy Jack Dainty. And uh, he asked me to work in his lab. This was when I was a senior, my last year, and 
So I, I worked, I, I, I was, I'm an American citizen at, at a, I was an American citizen at a Canadian university. So I got an extension of my visa and I worked that summer. And it, it, it wasn't really until I worked in the lab uh, for an extended period of time that I began to understand the, the, the aspects of science that have been since very attractive to me. And it's more the creative side of it, more the, the just problem solving in a creative way for really trying to understand how, how things work. And, and that's always driven me. I've, I've always been interested in, in coming up with new hypotheses and, and, and trying to understand things, look, to, to look at things in ways that people hadn't previously in, in order to solve the problem. And, and it's, I tell my students that most scientists are really idiot savants who just get obsessed. So you get a, a lot of good scientists just become obsessed with trying to solve a problem and, and that most people couldn't care less about. And, and, and so when people are having normal conversations, some of us are, you know, our minds are wandering about these problems or you know, late at night and so on. So, uh, I, so that aspect of problem solving, that creative side of it, I think is really what initially drew me to it and is what I really, still to this day really like. I, I work on, on synapses. I'm very much interested in the workings of synapses, uh, primarily the postsynaptic side. There's a presynaptic and postsynaptic side. I'm interested. I've been, I've a, I started initially working on ion channels. That was my graduate work. Uh, I was looking at single channel analysis of, of voltage gated sodium channels but in a very in vitro system, uh, in planar lipid bilayers, trying to understand how they function, uh, aspects of their pharmacology, those kinds of things. And, and from there, I went to Yale, and I started working on neurotransmitter receptors, nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. And that's the work I brought with me to University of Chicago, and since then I've been working on all kinds of neurotransmitter receptors. And the last 10 to 15 years, I've been very interested in how they're trafficked into synapses, uh, the kind of the, the cell biological questions addressing how synapses form in terms of the, the, their molecules. And, and these are some of the most important uh, molecules at the synapse and, and how uh, so how synapses develop, how, how they're regulated, how synaptic plasticity occurs, those kinds of questions at, at the very molecular level. Just from the most rudimentary kind of, of level, synapses, we think, and we, it's not firmly established, are, are critical structures for things like learning and memory. And so I'm just trying to understand how how they, they work and, and at the most basic level is really there isn't much known. So there, there's a structure that's called the postsynaptic density that I'm very interested that holds the receptors in place and aligns them where neurotransmitter is released. So neurotransmitter is released in little packets that, that, are, that fuse with the membrane and release glutamate or, or acetylcholine and uh, there's something that, that regulates how the receptors are aligned, but we, we really don't know. And so we're, one thing we're trying to do is understand, first of all, we're trying, I'm, I'm working with a physicist and who has come here and worked actually in the lab with me here. His name's Paul Selvin, and, and he's an expert in, uh, in, in light microscopy, developing techniques that, that allow you to break the, the light on microscopy limit, which is about, because of the size of wavelengths, it's about 300 nanometers. So with light microscopy, nor, microscopy, normally you cannot see below 
300 nanometers, but with new tricks, some of which have recently won the Nobel Prize about a year and a half ago, you can, you can get beyond this limit and actually a long way beyond this limit. And you can approach uh, uh, a resolution which is almost equivalent to the light, uh, to, the, to, to electron microscopy. Now, the problem with electron microscopy is that it, it, it has to be a fixed dead sample. And ideally, we want to see a live sample at that kind of resolution. And that's the only way that you can really get, begin to get at the dynamics of, of what's happening, the, to look in real time at the changes that occur and, and, and just the, 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 the dynamics of everyday processing that occur at synapses or, or anywhere in cells. And, and so we've been working with him to develop these techniques and and so these things are thought to be part of learning and memory which go and and can go awry in neurodegenerative diseases we have this long-standing interest in drug addiction because of our initially the neurotransmitter receptor i worked on were nicotine acetylcholine receptors and the binding of nicotine initiates uh, nicotine addiction and we have a lot of research that that indicates that it that that there are these important cell biological events that that underlie that, and we're trying to characterize those. Uh, so it's it's just basic understanding of synapses, how they fit in learning and things like learning and memory and disease and drug addiction, because they're the, thought to be the nexus where where. All these things converge, and, and, and if we can understand the basic science of this, then we can begin to, to treat and, and develop drugs and, and so on. As an undergraduate, I was very interested in physics and, and the connection between aspects of biology and physics, and I was drawn to studies of, of uh, uh, cell membranes and how cell membranes work, and particularly how proteins that, that mediate transport and, and ion flux across membranes work. And, and uh, so I started studying proteins that, as it turns out, were very important in terms of, of the function of, of neurons and synapses. And that got me interested in neuroscience in general. Of course, as a graduate student, I had a lot of courses in neuroscience. Both I was at Cornell Medical School and Rockefeller University, and and there were just some wonderful courses that that taught all aspects of, of neuroscience. And so, as I be, was studying these proteins, I, I progressively got more and more interested in, in neurosciences, science, and and how how uh, synapses work. A lot of the ideas about synapses, basic studies of neurobiology and, and how neurons work. And so this has always been a place where people come during the summer and, and work on these kinds of things. And, and so that, I just love being in a place where there's the community uh, that they have here, and and the, where where uh, the, the, it's, it's there's a collaborative sp spirit and a community here which uh, is is relatively rare, and and I find very attractive. Oh, it's made a huge difference. Just. Coming here and and being able, being untethered from the uh, the day to day responsibilities, the not having to worry about uh, the, the politics, the the, the uh, uh, you know the administrative aspects of my work. I, mean, I still have to deal with it somewhat, but much less than I normally do. Uh, teaching uh, and, and just being able to concentrate both
So this was a place where I could really sit down and think more about the, the big picture aspects of my science. And it was also a place where I could, could uh, spend more time with my family and, and also see friends that I don't get to normally see. So it, it, I think all those things uh, made a big difference in terms of my career. I, I, some of the biggest ideas I've, I've had, I came up with here. So there's a wonderful surrounding community of, of, of scientists and, and medical uh, uh, people who, who come here. Some of them retire here uh, and have, have had a huge interest in the MBL. They come to the Friday night lectures and, and uh, it's a wonderful aspect. It, it's, it's kind of almost the tribal kind of, of, of aspect of this place. That, that's helped maintain a community around it. And, and if you just follow, you know, what, what happens day to day in terms of, of you go in and you, you, you know, talk to people, you know, in, in, in the lab and, and you can go to course lectures and you, you go between course, lec you can occasional course lecture, your work, talking to your neighbors, uh, having lunch with people, you know, and 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 talking science and and science policy and and those kinds of things and and so every every night there's there's there are lectures except for well Saturday and Sunday there are no lectures but every weekday night there there are lectures where again people just come together and and listen and and critique and, and ask questions and uh, I think it, it's, it's this that, that really uh, maintains that, that aspect of, of, of this place. It's, it's, it's the critical mass of bringing people together uh, to, to work on science. So th that really, in, in, so in, in less than ideal circumstances. So the, the laboratory uh, equipment and the laboratory space is far from ideal and, and, and that makes people cooper more uh, cooperative and, and more dependent on each other. And, uh, and I, I think that has, has always been a part of it that, that, that led to the, to the collaborative communal kind of aspects. Uh, that are relatively rare in academics.